does green growth matter to ASEAN? Uh, for a simple reason that the natural capital and forest resources contribute greatly to ASEAN economies. Just to give you some statistics, um, the share contributed by natural capital to the economy of Brunei is 80%. For Laos, it's 55%, and for Indonesia, it's 25%. But the massive exploitation of a lot of these natural resources have obviously contributed to a lot of um, environmental degradation, which ultimately would place upper limits in terms of the growth or economic earnings that the countries can have. So there is an economic imperative for the countries to start pursuing green growth. Green growth is, has been typically espoused in both these two countries, Malaysia and the Philippines, as an economic approach, primarily, rather than an environmental approach. And the economic approach, it's an economic approach that aims to look at uh, improving efficiency across the value chain. Growth is essentially a function of uh, consumption and production. And for there to be green growth, we had to target the consumers and producers. So while pursuing green growth is critical, uh, it's uh, important to keep in mind that economic development and environmental enhancement are essentially for social reasons. Okay? Uh, that means uh, uh, intended to change the human condition. Thinking green sometimes um, provides some of the best opportunities uh, for survival and for growth. Challenge really is how do we, as I said earlier, involve the private sector in, in, into this uh, and, and get them into a mode where they're going to be contributors, which means there has to be a public-private kind of a, a cooperation, which will increasingly then create a private sector or, or engage the private sector and get them enthused enough to work towards what we would call as a, a green economy. There was a study done in 2014 that shows that the rate of deforestation in Indonesia was um, many times more than that of what was happening in Brazil. And um, Indonesia is the world's third largest um, producer of greenhouse gases behind China and US. So this is something that we should be concerned about. And 85% of its emissions basically comes from forest destruction and degradation. But at the same time, they are a source of livelihoods for many small scale farmers as well. So the issue has become increasingly politicized, as you can imagine. About a year or so ago, we supported around 15 countries in the, uh, to help them define their climate change commitments in the run-up to the historic climate, uh, Paris Climate Change Agreement. We think that these plans can be delivered. They're called the Nationally Determined Contributions, or NDCs. And what these plans contain is their um, uh, adaptation commitments, their greenhouse gas reduction targets, and what we're doing now is trying to start to work with these countries to implement the NDCs. You need strong political will and effective governance to maintain that momentum, ensure accountability, and possibly put in place the legislation that's needed. Now is the time that the public sector across all levels of government needs to step up and do that. You, they have the policies, but I think they need to go further. They need to go more than just environmental, sustainable. They need to start looking at circular economy procurement, procuring alternative business models. And I think at the moment we've got a bit of a, a chicken and egg scenario and you've got the private sector and manufacturers and service providers trying to develop alternative business models and greener ways of delivering products and services, but they're not being specified or procured by the public sector. So they're still very expensive, they're very niche. So I think somehow we need to, to get the, the sort of public sector in particular to start putting the, the sort of money where their mouth is really and, and start to get them. At the moment, we're seeing that no country can afford to pursue economic growth in the way that we've done in the past, business as usual, because the costs in terms of environment, social, human, are just way too much to bear for any country or for the region or for the world um, as a whole. <laughs>